Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R520 server memory upgrade kits and how to properly configure the system. You know, normally we just hop right into our videos, but uh, we're working up here late tonight. We're trying to, uh, you know, help everybody out and learn a little bit more about some of these different servers and how to load them and all that good stuff. So, hey, what I wanted to do was first thank all of our subscribers thanks people that actually like our videos and i thought maybe i could do a virtual cheers and we could do a one minute beer together so if you're interested hit pause uh, go grab a beer come on back and uh, let's do a one minute beer together okay so hopefully you're back i got my timer here let's go ahead and let's get started three two one let's go So, you know, uh, we, uh, we're, we, we work really hard up here, but, you know, we're a good crew of guys. Everyone really enjoys everybody. We try to uh, have a good time together. So, um, you know, on like holiday parties and stuff like that, you know, one minute beer is kind of like a tradition around here. So I thought, hey, you know, maybe let's have a little fun tonight with, um, with our videos. So, okay, I better stop talking. we got literally 30 seconds left. All right, 20 seconds. Hope you're keeping up because I'm a little behind. Ooh, down to the wire, five seconds. Ooh. Well, thank you for indulging me. Hopefully you finished on time. <laughs> well, seriously though, thanks for uh, stopping by. Thanks for um, come today to learn a little bit more about the uh, Power Edge R520. For starters, the uh, R520 is the next gen to the Dell Power Edge R510. It utilizes two CPUs, which are Intel E5 2400V1 or V2 series CPUs, which is an LGA1356 socket. Uh, there are um, 12 DIMM slots inside, and this is a DDR3 based machine. Uh, you can utilize two types of memory, ECC registered, also known as RDIM, or you can also use load reduced memory known as LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 384 gigabytes using 1232 gigs at 1600 megahertz. With load reduced, you can max out all the way at 768 gigabytes using 1264 gigs at 1600 megahertz as well. I would like to note, however, you can use 1866 megahertz uh, modules, or it goes all the way up to that speed, but for the uh, two that I just named, 32 gig ECC registered, uh, there isn't an 1866 megahertz, and with load reduced 64 gigs, there also is not an 1866 megahertz. So if you want to get 1866, you have to go with a uh, 32 gig LR DIMM. Uh, that's your uh, best hope there. Uh, and you can also use uh, a number of different sizes. You can use uh, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, and all the way up to 64 gig, as we mentioned. So anyhow, now that we know a little bit more about the system, let's go ahead and open it up, uh, learn a little bit more about the memory channels, how to properly configure it. Um, and uh, before we do that, let's get our ESD gear on. I, I always like to, to, to help people to get the ESD gear on just because you don't want to shock the machine. Uh, one little simple electro electrostatic discharge can uh, ruin a motherboard or ruin a part. So we'll be right back. And we are back. Now that we uh, have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from getting shocked. First things first, you want to make sure the latch is set to unlock. Simply lift it up, and pop it open, and take the top off. Very simple, just like uh, most of the Dell Power Edges that are out there. Uh, you will notice that there is um, an air shroud, also known as an air baffle, that is uh, on top of the CPUs and the DIMMs. Uh, this is obviously important just to regulate airflow. Um, so I like to grab right here and right here and just lift straight up. Uh, I always say to people, just lift straight up so you don't... Uh, sometimes people will lift over or lift like this, and uh, you could there's you know connectors and there's cables and there's different things that you could potentially damage um, just by being you know I don't want to say careless, but uh, you know just lifting it up without really thinking too much about it. So just straight up is the best way to go. So anyhow, now that we're in here, you'll notice that there are two CPUs. CPU one controls the six DIMMs over here. CPU two controls the six DIMMs over here. Uh, uh, Dell has actually labeled everything, which is very nice. For 
for us uh, to let you know how to um, you know, properly configure everything. So for instance, if you only had one CPU, you would need to put it in this socket. And if you were only uh, using one CPU and let's just say like three DIMMs, you would want to put them in the three white slots, right? The, the white slots are the start of the channels. Um, so if you were not fully maxing the machine out, that would be the proper way to configure the system. Of course, if you were using two CPUs and let's just say uh, six modules, as opposed to putting all six modules on one side, you want to balance the load across all the memory channels. So I'd actually recommend putting them in these six white slots, okay? So that would be the best way to actually load or configure the system if you were uh, not fully maxing it out and you had two CPUs inside. Okay, so what we're actually gonna do um, is fully load it up here in a second, um, but we were kind of touching base on the memory channels. I want to tell you, tell you a little bit more about the memory channels. Um, the memory channels are important uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, if you were using a, a, a very similar system to, to this, such as the R720, that has actually three DIMMs per memory channel, and you run into an issue called the rank rule, which prevents you from um, basically fully maxing it out. With this machine, you don't have to worry about the rank rule, which is actually a, a nice advantage. Uh, thank you, Dell, for that, um, because this machine, as we discussed, has two CPUs. Um, each CPU has three memory channels, and each memory channel has two DIMM slots, uh, preventing you from running into the rank rule issue. So anyhow, we're going to load it up, and we're going to show you how easy it is to actually do. Uh, but before we do, one of the things I wanted to note is you need to pay attention to this notch here right in the middle. This notch, uh, also known as the key, is important because um, it prevents users from uh, loading the wrong modules. So for instance, if you were loading a uh, uh, DDR4 module into this machine, it just physically would not fit. If you grabbed an old DDR2 module and you try to put it into this machine, it physically would not fit. This is very important because uh, it prevents users from making errors. On the flip side, it's also important important because you need to make sure you line this up because this uh, notch is in the socket itself on the motherboard. So if you put it the wrong way like this, then you could potentially do one of two things, damage the lead itself or even damage the, uh, the socket. If you damage the socket, the problem there is that you might have to actually um, replace the motherboard. No one wants to do that. That's expensive. Uh, and, and that's just over an uh, uh, insert error, over an install error, uh, nobody wants that. So anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and install it. Um, for me, since we're fully maxing this out, I'm actually going to start with the inside black slot. And one of the things that I always do before I start, it's a uh, you know personal preference. You don't have to do this, but it makes everything easier. You'll notice I just pushed open all the tabs. I do that so I'm not fumbling around with it. Um, if I'm loading modules, you, you just want to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, and then all you have to do is line it up and simply put them in. It's very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And this first one too, I want to note for you, you're going to hear it click. Like right now, it's in. You might think it's in, you're like, oh, I've pushed on it, it's in, it, it's not in. You need to hear this click. That click lets you know you've fully seated it. We hear all too often from uh, customers who have bought upgrades that they think that there's a bad dim, and actually what the issue is, they didn't fully insert the module. And it's not their fault, it's, um, you kind of have to push it a little bit harder than you'd like. Like right now, I mean, I'm pushing and it's fully in, but it's not in, and you have to actually push with, you know, apply a decent amount of pressure. So once you hear the click, you know you're good. So let's go ahead and finish loading it up. And at this point, you'll notice that the modules um, on a lot of machines flip. Um, they actually don't flip on this machine, but I always like to point it out just because some people expect that. And they end up putting them in the wrong way. So voila, just like that, in a matter of, you know, a couple of minutes, 
you can easily install these modules and really uh, boost the performance on this machine as a whole. Um, one thing I also always like to recommend for customers at the end, double check, like even right here, I see it, there's this one that's popping out. You hear that click? It wasn't fully inserted. So I always say to double check the tabs because even you know, an expert can make a mistake just like I did right there. So um, just make sure the tabs are fully uh, pushed in and that way you do not run into seating issues. So um, just like that, uh, you can easily install the modules and now we'll put it back together. So uh, we talked about holding right here. We're just simply gonna line everything up. And it is kind of snug, but you'll notice this goes straight in right there and that's kind of what holds holds it is this little hole over here so after that you just put on the top and you're done so first off I want to thank you for stopping by if you made it this far on the video then do us a favor and click the subscribe button down below and like the video and if you have any questions if you need upgrades yourself uh, please feel free to reach out to uh, sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com and thanks again for stopping by have a great day